Hello, it's James from xrobots.co.uk. This is part five of Gonk Droid, the real robot. The plan is to build a Gonk Droid or Power Droid from Star Wars. It's one of those ones that walks around in the background with a box on top and to make that as a real robot instead of a costume. So I've already done quite a lot of R&D and testing, and obviously I've built the legs already. So check out the previous episodes for more on that. Today we're going to get on with the top, which is the body, which is basically the box, and also the waist hinge. It's quite a lot of printing to do, so let's get on with it. Here's the CAD version of the robot, and very approximately what's going on is the top and the bottoms of the legs are these parallelograms, which always keeps the body bolt upright front to back and side to side the ankles and hips are independent with these uh, pivot points here and the gear tracks that I put in last time. So this means that it can compensate by throwing its weight side to side with the hip and ankle joints, but if it tries to do that front to back it always stays upright. So I put an additional hinge in which is just down here around the waist for an extra waist which is going to uh, basically be dynamically driven by the inertial measurement unit to compensate front to back. So we need to make sure there's room for that to move. The entire box is going to pivot over the top. And we've also got the points which are on each side here which allow the legs to split so that it can actually walk in a circle or turn on the spot. So again we need to make sure there's clearance in the box. So I've been messing around scaling the box. I think this is going to be the size of it pretty much. It's just wide enough that these things can split outwards and there should be enough clearance there for everything else to move, so I think that's going to be the size. So I've designed this pivot mechanism which uses another motor to drive the body backwards and forwards, so essentially what we'll have on top is a tooth track, I haven't drawn the teeth on there yet, and a motor that sits on this green plate and that's pivoted around the waist point. So uh, this whole thing will pivot backwards and forwards, and in fact we can use Smart Rotate to see how that's going to work. There we go, so that's the sort of action we get there, so we need to attach the box to that. I've decided the simplest thing to do is just run the pivot point all the way through into the box and we'll have a reinforced area there and another one at the top here and that's going to be attached to the top of this, so that seems like the simplest way of uh, actually fixing that box on. We can just make it clear again and we can see through it. So the box is going to be a lightweight frame with removable panels. The battery is probably going to mount onto the points I've left at the front here. So there'll be another additional sort of bracket that holds the main drive battery. And then the electronics are going to be mounted in panels that mount just inside the box. I've started to break out the panels there, so I've left a bit of a frame in there so we can fit a panel from behind. Or we can obviously solvent weld things in. So my hole prints are ABS. So I can use acetone to make solvent welds, we might need reinforcement in there potentially, but we'll certainly need brackets to mount panels for the electronics. I've got some more panels missing there, so I've left a tab there for the main hinge point, and another thing up here which is going to support the top of the body, so hopefully those can be reinforced up and those will be the main mounting points for the frame. So I've now broken the frame into two parts, a bit like, looks like two shopping baskets, so we can start to break this up and print all the parts. So this uh, will lift out here and slot neatly into its skirt so we can try and lie some of these parts down flat. The only thing I'm not quite sure about is how I'm going to do the corners which I probably want to print that way up so we get the best print quality. So I've started to cut this up even more so here's the bottom frame which needs to be cut into several pieces. The tabs are removable and those will be printed flat on the bed so they're actually this way so that we get those nice and strong because those are the main mounting points and those will be then solvent welded in. The corners I've broken down, so they're uh, otherwise they're too tall to go in the printer basically, and all this will be solvent welded together. It's quite likely I will need some extra reinforcement tabs on the inside, especially where uh, these long pieces attach onto the end of this. I'm going to need something inside, but it's alright, we can just solvent weld everything together. As with the previous parts, I've made my own toothed track by cutting one of the teeth off a gear and then using the circular pattern tool to map it around that radius and I decided in the end that 142 teeth was the right number so I've then broken it out and merged it and as before I did a short test so I could run one of the gears along to check that's the right number and the spacing is right. Here is one of the hinge arms being printed. This is the final toothed track part.
Here's the motor mount. Here's the main track and the motor assembly. So that's the track. It's in two halves I've screwed together. I haven't solvent welded them for now in case I need to change this track radius. And the motor here is a 300 RPM motor. It's slightly beefier than the ones I used in the legs, uh, but obviously it runs faster. And the leverage angle I've got basically is about two and a half times what I have in the leg. And the motor is three times faster. So hopefully it should be able to move at roughly the same speed. If it's not enough torque or it's too fast, then I can always get a motor with a gearbox on, which is geared down to say 150 RPM. We can just swap that piece out. So this mounts onto the motor bracket, which you'll notice I've got a nice thing on to put a bolt through to grip it nice and tight. And that mounts on there and the whole thing goes on the arm so that that will go across the top. And my gears appear to mesh pretty well. So I'm pretty happy with that. So I've got my levers fitted, which are spaced out a little bit with those red spacers. And my motor assembly should fit on here. So that should mesh quite nicely with that gear. So we need to just screw that on and then we can run the motor and see what happens. Right, that's fitted. It's actually a pretty tight fit on the track. So we can run that backwards and forwards with a battery and some wires. It's pretty quick actually, uh, probably a little bit too quick. Or maybe not. So basically it has to compensate for the wobble to kill the wobble, a bit like balancing BB-8 side to side, so... Yeah, it's pretty fast, we might need to go, well, maybe it'll be okay. We'll have to see when the rest of the load is on there and see what happens. Obviously we can speed control it as well, but for now that will do. I've decided that Galaxy Blue is the right colour for these box pieces. It's a bit more purple than it looks on the video, but obviously we can always paint it up and weather it and that sort of thing. But for now we just need to get that frame printed. I've got a couple of tazzies and two spools of the filament, so we should be able to get the bottom and top done in half the time. Print's been running for 6 hours 26 so far, so I think it's going to be a 7 hour print. And this is only uh, two corners, in fact, these pieces stack on top of each other. So the other printer's doing another two, then I've got another whole two prints to do to do all of the corners for the top and the bottom of the box. I've combined both rims into one file and um, basically aligned them. I've put lots of pinholes in which are all 3mm pins that go all the way through for alignment and I've cut it up into lots of pieces so it's small enough to fit on the print bed. These will then be turned so they're flat on the bed. So the bottom one of course has this overhang so that'll be turned up the other way and then I'll print them both so both the overhangs are the right way up and then reassemble it all in real life like a jigsaw. Once we've got the corners stuck in then we can work our way around and see which other pieces we need to do to do the top of the boxes. Here's one of the corners for the bottom of the main rim coming out. So I actually found that the first part I did walked off the bed on the corner there and that's not very good so I decided to terminate that print and slice all the parts again with another horizontal slice. So the parts printing now are in fact half the height so I have four of those to stack up to make the whole height of the rim. Here are some of the first few parts, so each one of these is taking about two hours, but it's obviously two hours concurrently with the other printer, so they seem to be okay. We've obviously got uh, the parts that stack there. This is the bottom rim, and the corners can plug into that recess. And obviously there's the top rim to do as well, which is another two sections underneath. So I've got quite a lot of pieces to do here, plus all of the corners and all of the other parts. So just starting to assemble the corners here, which are of course double stacked, so we need to make a solvent weld for the middle part, and this one I've done, it's all in one piece. So to do that, I'm just cleaning up each surface and roughing it up a bit by just sliding it on some sandpaper. Trying to get equal pressure, and also the top part here, which is the top of the print that's going to bond to that, it's obviously textured, so we need to do that one especially well. Keeping it as flat as possible. So we get a smooth surface all over. We should find if we test fit those, they're nice and smooth and feel like they're sliding together well. 
All the parts are printed in ABS, so I've got some acetone in a pot. It's pretty dirty acetone that's had the brush dip back in from various ABS welds. Obviously, we don't need too much filler or anything. We could dissolve more ABS in to make it thicker, but because we've made the surfaces smooth, we can just use a really small amount of that all over. And the other one. It evaporates pretty quick, so we probably want to go back quickly on the first one. And then we should be able to stick those together. You should feel it grab immediately. And then we can just slide them together, and that should be it, really. Make sure we don't get any acetone on the outside, because it will make a shiny patch. But on the inside, we can always go over and just go over the seam there. Just make sure that's perfectly aligned as it sets up. And there we go. These are two pieces from the bottom rim and I need to make sure those are aligned and attached together. So I've put two steel 3mm pins in. Obviously they align with the holes and the bottom and top will align as well. So that's just a simple case of sticking some acetone on the surfaces. and sticking those together. And we'll just stick a couple of clamps on and that should be fine. Well, I'm guessing there, there's a lot of pieces to do. Just setting up one of the corners in the frame there. So I've just got a couple of clamps on it, but it fits neatly into that recess and all the corners are pretty much the same. So it makes a nice bond. Here are the pieces so far, just waiting for a couple more things to print for the upper studding joints. But basically we've got most of the top and bottom. I've printed two entire rolls of filament away this week, plus all the other stuff for the mechanical design. And I'm nearly there, or at least this is all I've got time to print this week. So it's quite a big structure. Obviously I've still got some of the things to go that go across the corners. But um, I've got most of the mounting points in and I'm just clamping up the last piece here so we should be able to mount it up. Here it is, it's big isn't it? So um, I've mounted this up, the uh, bits of studding I put through fit onto this perfectly. So now of course this whole box can tilt. I think that motor probably needs to be a slightly lower RPM, I can back drive it pretty easily. So I probably need to put 100 or 150 RPM in instead of 300, but most of those sorts of motors and gearboxes are the same size so that's no problem. I've still got some cross bracing to do, the other corners and of course eventually the panels. Next time I'm going to be putting in some mountings for electronics that are going to effectively provide that cross bracing and be slightly recessed from where the panel would be inside. So I need to put the battery on, some motor drivers for every motor, also the feedback pots and all those things are going to get done next time and of course we need to make a remote control. So don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more updates on this project and other projects. And also check out my Patreon campaign at patreon.com slash xrobots where you can get access to some exclusive rewards including all my videos early and a live broadcast with me. Alright, that's all for now.